Hello and welcome to My Career in Data, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Nicole Luke from Signific. With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry-leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launchpad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DVTALKS for 20% off your purchase. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity and this is My Career in Data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management to understand how they got there and to talk with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. And today we are joined by Nicole Luke, the co-founder of Signific. And today... And normally, this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest, but in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Nicole, hello and welcome. Hi there, Shannon. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for being here. So tell me, okay, so as the co-founder of Signific, tell me what type of business is Signific? Well, Signific does uh, data and analytics as well as project management consulting. Um, Our projects tend to be more in the agile and scrum world rather than waterfall because honestly, our backgrounds are in software development and tech. So that tends to be more of the types of projects we take on. But recently I also just launched a course uh, called Data, Building a Data Mindset that focuses on solving the right problems and answering the right questions in data but it doesn't really focus too much on the tools and techniques. It really focuses more on that. What is the problem and what are the right questions you need to ask to solve that problem? Oh, I love that. Did that evolve from uh, demand from your customers? To be honest, that evolved from my own experience and what I was seeing in the industry in terms of what was lacking. There's a lot of mm-hmm. courses out there on the technical skills and certifications and you know, become an expert in this. and there wasn't a whole lot out there that said, hey, but what problem are we trying to solve? And what questions do we need to ask to solve those problems? And why do we wanna solve them anyways? (laughs) So I really wanted to start from the beginning of the process rather than say, hey, here's this great tool or great technique. I wanted to be like, let's start at the beginning and ask the right questions and solve the right problems. Oh, I love that. So then tell me as the co-founder, what is it that you do? Well, what I normally do, as I mentioned, so I'm really on the analytics and the project management side. So we actually, my husband and I accidentally founded this company to begin with. Um, It was one of those days where I was sitting at the playground with my kids and thinking about, I just left a junior high math teaching position. And I was like, what do I want to do with my life? And a former colleague just called me up and said, hey, uh, I I need a data consultant. Are you interested? And looked at my husband. I was like, what do you think? He's like, sure, that sounds great. So in three days, we incorporated a company and I started consulting. And yeah, it was kind of very spur of the moment. And it turned out really well. So uh, I actually ended up uh, taking on some contracts and then realized that, you know, I actually wanted to do something that was very much in the data realm, I wanted to start looking at creating online courses. And so I spun off Signific from our original company to have this focus in the in the data world. And you know, building a course and helping train people on data and analytics. Oh, that's so cool. I love that. I love happenstance and uh, things that uh, just fall into place. Um, And we'll get more into that too. So, um, but tell me, you know, how do you work with data uh, in your job currently? Well, honestly, it'll depend on what kinds of contracts I have. So Right now, I'm actually working with a large organization and I'm helping to establish agile and scrum processes on a data team. So what Mm -hmm. I do is I'll I'll meet with the teams daily and I'll get their progress updates and help remove any roadblocks. Um, I'll also meet with the business owners and talk about their data needs and what their priorities are and, and why they're trying to solve certain problems using data and how I can best help them structure that. And then I'll talk with the data management team and architects and engineers, and we'll talk about platforms and architectures and how we should actually structure our data to, you know, have good data quality so that it's not garbage in, garbage out. Um, So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. But outside of the contracts and consulting, um, I'm also continuing to do research in data and analytics, keeping myself current in the field. 
also looking at what's my next online course opportunity in terms of what the demand is out there, what, what I see as a gap in the data world. And throughout my research, I'll write blog posts or I will you know, post on social media or record my own videos to help people who are looking for resources or just trying to solve problems with data. Oh, that's very cool. All right, well, let's get into the more here in a bit, but let's back up and uh, let me ask, you know, is this what you wanted to be when uh, you were just a, a very young person, say six years old? Like, did you say to myself, I'm going to grow up and I'm going to be a co-founder uh, <laughs> of a consulting company or, or what was the dream? Uh, well, it depends on what age you talk to me. In all honesty, the dream has my, you know, it's morphed a little bit over years. Uh, at six years old, I wanted to be a teacher because that's what I was exposed to. And I also, to be honest, I was always one of those kids in class where, you know, when the teacher was busy helping a student and somebody else needed help, I was always the one to jump in and, and help. I was never the one to give the answer. I was always like, well, let's work through this and see if you can learn it. Uh -huh. So I've always had uh -huh. that teacher part of me, but as I progressed through my education in high school, you know, my, my parents are immigrants. And so, you know, success to them was one of like the big careers, like accounting or a lawyer or engineer or doctor. So my dad wanted me to be an accountant. He just, that was, that was success to him in, in the old school world. And uh, I remember taking a career aptitude test in high school. And it just now looking back reminds me of how bad those aptitude tests were in the, the data and the math fields. Like, it suggested that my optimal career was head teller at a bank. That's what math people did. They went and became bank tellers, apparently. So I'd love right. to take a look at the coding behind that and see what were the actual mm -hmm. careers in math that they would have suggested. Um, but yeah, that wasn't that wasn't really for me. So I went from, you know, that to I did go and get a business degree in finance. And I fell in love, interestingly, with mergers and acquisitions. I love the idea of being yeah. able to value a company and being like, hey, I can look through all your spreadsheets, look through all your financials and be like, this is what you're worth and tell a story from that and have the numbers back me up. I really fell in love with that idea of like data and data storytelling before data storytelling became a thing, right? And, yeah, yeah. and so I, I went and got a finance degree and I went and worked at a, one of the big banks as a financial advisor. And I found out pretty quickly that I liked looking at portfolios and not so much giving advice and doing sales. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, and then and then I actually went after that and I got a master's degree and I fell in love with statistics, which was actually mm. pretty ironic, given that in high school, I was one of those cheeky teenage kids who thought they knew it all and was like, who cares about probability it either happens or it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> and then I built a career in statistics. So who knows? Right. So, yeah, like I said, I've, I've morphed over the years, but it always was somewhat related to either teaching or data, to be honest. <laughs> Oh, I love that so much. And oh my gosh, I remember taking that that test uh, in, and I remember looking at the results going, that is no. <laughs> yeah. no just I aspire right. to be more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I forget what mine was. I, I, don't, I didn't even log it in memory. I'm like, just <laughs> put it aside. And that was it. Um, okay, well, so fascinating. Um, so you, you get a, you, you've got a master's now. Um, so after college, then, you know, where did you go? What, what, what did you go straight into teaching? You mentioned you were a teacher or what was your first job out of, out of college or after getting your master's? Well, uh, well, after I finished my finance degree, I said, I went and worked for one of the major banks in Canada. And then I went mm -hmm. for my master's. And after that, I actually went and I was a statistical analyst doing uh, cardiovascular research. <laughs> oh, really? Yes, we, we did investigations into certain drugs and how they impact heart attack patients. And I loved it, except for the fact that it was really slow. It was very like you would spend a week doing one analysis and wait for the cardiologist to review your data. And the whole point mm -hmm. was to get published. So mm -hmm. I needed something a little bit more. And I ended up becoming back then we were called business analysts. Now that term is an IT term. Um, and I ended up working for a company called Intuit. And I mm -hmm. was a business analyst there for years, and I really, really got exposed to the world of analytics and business decisions using numbers and just predictive modeling before it was called predictive modeling, when it was called data mining back in the day. And mm -hmm. I just, I really fell in love with, with that whole idea of looking at the numbers and telling a story, even though back then I didn't know that's what I was doing. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and so, and then after Intuit, I ended up going to 
I actually, that's when I got my teaching degree because I was getting a little bit frustrated with the lack of buy-in. Like businesses were still very much on gut feel and this is what I think is right. Can you just make the data tell me what I already want it to say? And so I was getting a little bit frustrated with that. And so I went and got my teaching degree. So I thought, hey, I could probably start at the beginning, like when they're young, get them when they're little. <laughs> so I wanted mm -hmm. to go and teach high school or junior high and get them to appreciate math and data, especially because I don't find that education really does. They, they, they rush through the statistics and they rush through the data units. They focus a lot on the, you know, integers and decimals, but what do you do with all those integers and decimals, right? So um, yeah, I ended up being a junior high teacher for about a year. And one of the things that always struck me as weird was people say, well, I'm just not good at math, but you don't hear people say that, like, I'm just not good at reading. They're like, I don't like reading, but they never say I'm not good at it. So I really wanted yeah. to change that perception in kids. So, yeah. I love that. I, I, very aspirational and, and wow, that's very, very cool. So, so then when, and so then you were a junior high teacher for a year and then, and then you just, uh, then when, that's when the opportunity came to start the new company? Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I've had other, other jobs in between and I got to do a lot more of the analytics side. I had to grow a little bit more in my career, work with different kinds of people, but it was generally still analytics. Um, yeah. I mean, it was amazing. And like, it was around, I came off of maternity leave, I remember, and holy, the field just exploded while I was on maternity Because in Canada, we yeah. get one, back then we got one year of maternity leave, right? So after one year, I was like using a couple of tools. I come back and there's like 15 tools now that are out there and everybody's all about data. And so um, I got to learn a lot. And that's kind of after mm -hmm. those few jobs, I that's when I started feeling a little bit more frustrated that People just wanted data for the sake of saying they were using it, but they weren't really using it. And that's when I became a teacher and then decided I needed to do something that was a little bit more where I could control the projects that I took on, the customers I worked with. And I could learn more too. The more people I worked with, the more companies I worked with, I could see more. I could see how different mm -hmm. people did different things. And I could just, I could learn a lot more doing it myself. <laughs> I understand. Uh, oh, that's great. And I love that you um, took that time to not only be a new mom, congratulations, um, you know, and, but, uh, you know, to learn and, and further educate yourself. Um, that's just, you know, so many people in data, that's just what we hear all the time. You got to keep learning and, and just kind of keep exploring. Um, and I can relate so much to uh, a lot of what you're saying. My sister is a vascular surgeon, so she's not in cardiology, but everything leading up to, right? So, and was getting her master's in research on how to take a class on statistics. And she, she oh, she's, her book, I was a book I hadn't read before on statistics. I'm like, oh, let me do it with you. Let me, you know, sound like fun. Um, <laughs> so I can completely understand that passion um, and relate to it very much so. Um, and it's fun to apply it to research, I think, because it, it's, it's a lot you can learn. Um, it's true. I, I really enjoy applying data. You know, uh, I know mm -hmm. that in the math field, there's like the pure mathematicians and then there's the applied statisticians and they don't always get along, but I, right. I love the application of something theoretical. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of behavioral science as well. And, mm -hmm. you know, I read a ton of books, you know, like your Hannah Fry's Hello World or um, mm -hmm. Weapons of mm -hmm. Math Destruction was one of my, one of the books I really enjoyed as well in terms of <laughs> not only how, you know, we can use data to help make decisions and build models, but also how we can go wrong when we trust it too much without actually questioning what we put into those models. So yeah, research is, is kind of a, a fun area for me. I always liked looking into that stuff. Do you think that um, it, part of the frustration is, you know, where you go from a job where it's all about the data and relying on the data in a very scientific method versus, you know, in back in the corporate world where it, you know, not so much, right? And as you say, you know, there's that desire to for, to not rely on the data and to just make it want to, you know, appear however, you know, manipulate it to appear how you want it to appear, right? Yeah. No, I definitely um, did, especially earlier in my career, I definitely, that was a huge frustration for me, but I've actually found now, especially with having my own company and seeing different perspectives of how people work with data, I really did used to think that data was the end all be all and data told you everything. But now mm -hmm. I really do see, I appreciate that combination of data to make data informed decisions, 
but also the experience you bring to something, you know, in terms of like knowing what the business context is and, and that what we call gut feel isn't always gut feel, it's experience, right? We just call it gut right. feel. And so that's kind of when, where I kind of combine that idea of what is the right problem? Because you can go and take a bunch of data, do a bunch of research and analysis, and you might be solving something that's not even important. So that's where that whole idea of, well, what's my business and what do I need? And I'm mm -hmm. not necessarily sure that research always takes that step back approach and say, why am I doing this in the first place? Right. And so yeah. I really do like that in the business world where companies do say, like, this is what we're trying to solve. Can you help us solve it? And, and like, not all companies do that, unfortunately, but the ones that do, I find have been the most successful where they're, they're open to that, you know, maybe we were solving the wrong problem to begin with. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Oh, I, I love that a lot. So Visit dataversity.net and expand your knowledge with thousands of articles and blogs written by industry experts, plus free live and on-demand webinars covering the complete data management spectrum. While you're there, subscribe to the weekly newsletter so you'll never miss a beat. So then, and, um, what has your, been your biggest lesson so far? Well, there, there's a couple of different things. Uh, if we're like, we'll talk about the data part in just a sec, but my, my, probably my biggest lesson in my career, I remember back in the early days of Intuit, they came out with operating values. And the one that has stuck with me my whole career is it's the people. I really honestly don't think I could have made it in this career without learning how to work with people, trusting my team, being a team, knowing how to collaborate and knowing how a uh, high performing team works. I was really lucky at Intuit in the early days where we were just such an amazing group of people who really, we were all there to help each other out, to make the company better, to make our workspace better. And I really kind of, a lot of these people have become my network. So working at Intuit, yeah. like the people even still, I haven't been there for almost a decade now. And the people I worked with there, they're still my key network of people. And, you know, <laughs> the funny thing is, is that, uh, there's a lot of them I still turn to for advice and for opportunities. And so really have building good relationships with your coworkers, I found not only makes your day better because you have people you like to work with, but you get more stuff done when everybody assumes good intent. Everybody assumes that everyone is there to do a good job and to work towards a common goal. So that's my biggest, I'd say, overarching lesson. But in terms of my biggest data lesson, <laughs> I would say, once again, figuring out what problem it is I'm trying to solve and what is the business context in which I'm trying to solve it. So hard skills are really important, especially when you're in school and you're coming out of school and you're building your career. But at a certain point in your career, the hard skills don't matter as much. Getting the certifications doesn't matter as much because what you need to do is you need to learn how to communicate the insights. You need to learn how to tell the story. You need to learn how to interact with people and, you know, be a good coworker and a good team member. And so to me, that was my biggest lesson, which is why I built a course around it is that what is the problem you're trying to solve and what questions you need to ask to make sure you're answering, like you're really solving that problem. And that's kind of the biggest, I'd say, data lesson that I've learned. <laughs> it's a very, I agree. It's such an important one. And we hear that all the time that, you know, uh, I've had many people come a chief data officer's number one job is communication. Yeah. 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 It's so true. It's a cliche, so, but it's true. It's a true cliche. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. No, it's very, very true. Um, so, um, so Nicole, then uh, having worked with data for so long, uh, what is your definition of data? Well, I'm always a, a fan of Occam's razor and, you know, the simplest solution is the best one, but I personally think that data is just information, information that helps you make an informed decision. And I mean, that's the broadest sense of it. And like I, in my course, I give an example, you're at a restaurant and you can't decide between two main courses that you want to have. So you ask the server, what is your opinion on these two meals that I want to choose between? And he might tell you, here's my opinion. Here's what other people I've heard have said. Here's what my coworkers have said. And boom, he's just giving you data to make an informed decision on your meal, right? So right. And, and it's simplest, it's it's just information for informed decision making. Mm, mm, absolutely. So, and, and then do you see the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and why? 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, just looking back on the last 10 years, it's crazy how much it's grown. But in all honesty, mm -hmm. I think I think we will continue to grow in a few different ways. So first of all, there's formal data roles. So with the titles like analyst or scientist or engineer. And I mean, I started my career as a business analyst and we had no room to grow. And now you can be a chief data officer. Right. So mm -hmm. I definitely think that there is room for those like the titles are still changing and they're evolving as the world changes and AI is going to change that again. And mm -hmm. I think right now the larger organizations or the startups that, you know, can understand the importance of data are there in the data space. They're, they're the ones who are doing a lot of this hiring, but I think where a lot of the growth is going to start happening is more in these smaller companies that are realizing that having somebody who knows data on staff will be helpful to them. Right. But honestly, I think that where a lot of the growth is going to happen is going to be in these informal roles. So you don't have a job title that has the word analyst in it. You know, like when I was starting my career, I'd have a marketing manager come to me and I do campaign analysis for them, or I do a survey and then analyze the survey results. But I think now data is going to be in every job title, the need to work with data, the need to understand data. So it might not be a data role specifically, but there'll be an element in almost every job title that says, you're gonna to need to know how to work with data or a tool that has reporting and then you have to be able to interpret that reporting and present it to somebody you know and i mean i think the, the dif distinction between formal and informal roles will definitely um, change over time and then of course you know notwithstanding ai <laughs> which of course is changing things even as we speak right. i think the you know this concept of you know privacy and and data privacy and the fact that our data and our personal data is out there and we've seen breaches and you know, hacks and stuff like that. I think people are just becoming more aware of the fact that yeah. there's so much data on you out there that I think a lot of organizations and governments are now starting to create roles around data governance and data standards and data ethics. So I think that's another area where data management is going to become huge over time because, you know, we have legal departments in almost every company. We're going to have to have data ethics departments eventually too, because you know, up until now, we've been in the wild west of data. We can do whatever we want with it. Nobody knew any better, but, you know, Cambridge Analytica right. changed that. So, um, yeah. Yeah. You know, you're the first person to bring up a uh, career path. Um, we haven't really talked about that before. So I never thought that they're about that. They're not being a good career path for analysts or otherwise. And you're absolutely right, because it's not just chief data officer anymore. Um, I remember somebody asking me if there would be chief data officers, if it was just a pad and they would go away. <laughs> but now, <laughs> but now they're definitely here to stay. Um, but now they, but they have evolved. It's not just chief data officer anymore. It's chief data and analytics officer. Yeah. Or it's chief uh, CD. So there's CAIOs, right? chief um, AI <laughs> officers. Yeah. Well, yeah, even, yeah. even before that, like in my career, you couldn't mm -hmm. necessarily go from a senior analyst to, you know, now they have principal software developers. There, there was no path for even an individual contributor to say, mm -hmm. I want to grow in my career and become more right. of a subject matter expert and help other people. It was like you were just an analyst and that's where you got to stay. You had to change your career, become somebody in product management or marketing to actually yeah. up, uh, up your role and your title. And so we mm -hmm. have, we actually have career paths now, which I think is really helpful because I never wanted to leave data, but I didn't have any options other than leaving a company and becoming a teacher. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> And look at you now. Yeah. Now so, I have a company um, and people want to buy data. So, or buy data services, I should say. So yeah, it's pretty fun. That's amazing. Uh, so, Nicole, then what advice would you give to anyone looking to get into a career in data management? At well, any... <laughs> yeah, sir, go ahead. Okay. At, at any level. At yeah. any level, yeah. I mean, to be honest, um, I've never followed a typical path in my career. I mean, I went from being, you know, an analyst in cardiovascular medicine to being, you know, a business analyst that doesn't even exist anymore to being a teacher. So my advice is, don't worry about having a typical path. There is no such thing as a typical path anymore. What you're doing down like in 10 years might not even exist right now. Like it didn't when I was in high school, what I do now didn't even exist. So don't worry about what, what certifications do I need? And you know, what kinds of job titles do I need to have? And you know, that sort of thing. I would say just follow your interests, 
just start digging into the data, you know, go into, you can do all sorts of things now with like Kaggle and all that, where you can just get data and start playing around with it and just be open to opportunities. To be honest, my career would not have gotten me this far if I didn't pursue opportunities. You know, somebody came to me mm -hmm. and said, Hey, do you want to do this? And I'm like, that sounds like fun. Sure. I'll give it a shot. You know, don't always just think that there is one way to do things. Be open to the possibility that it's not going to be a standard way of doing things. Right. And then of course it's don't get too focused on getting a ton of certifications and thinking you need like 18 million technical skills because communication is going to be the, the career builder for you. The technical skills will get you in the door, but communication and, you know, being able to talk to people and present to people and, you know, learning how to identify the real problems, figuring out how to communicate insights and recommendations so your audience will listen, you know, that's going to become kind of your bread and butter if you want to grow in the data management field. And then, yeah. like what I say to everybody is, you know, just be curious and open to learning because, you know, if you don't learn and you don't grow, then this field is not for you because everything is changing constantly, you know, and I mean, I believe in yeah. this so much that I built a course around it. So <laughs> this is my advice to people is, you know, don't worry about a typical path and just be open and curious to learning. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, you know, but you mentioned and you mentioned a couple of times about certifications, you know, but do you do you think they're valuable once you decide you have got this is my passion, I want to go this way to learn more as a cert certification value in that respect, when you go and like, hey, I, I really want um, to pursue this angle, I really want to just make sure I've got a good education path for that and show that I'm I'm an expert. I think certifications definitely have a role. I'm not saying don't get any of them. What I'm just saying is don't get them for the sake of getting them as something to pad your resume. Mm -hmm. I think you should get yeah. a certification if you're really interested in that field and you do want to learn more. And if you think that the certification will actually teach you something, it's not just a check mark mm -hmm. on your resume or check mark to apply for a job, because that's not the right reason to take any kind of course. You're not going to get what you need out of it. So I would say yeah. if you're going to take a certification, do it for the right reasons, because you want to learn the material and you want to become an expert, not because you think it's expected of you. Yeah, that's such good advice. I I, I totally agree. I, I spent a lot of my career <laughs> doing what I was supposed to do versus what, you know, following that passion. I was afraid to yeah. follow that passion. But, you know, life is so much better and happier when you do. Yeah, and look where you are now, right? So yeah, uh, once you gosh. stop being afraid. <laughs> Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, I love I can't ask for a better job yeah. <laughs> or company to work with. Uh, Nicole has been such a pleasure. You know, um, I would be remiss if I didn't ask uh, if somebody wanted to look up your company, where would they go? Well, I have a website. It's Signific.co. So think of statistically significant, but with IQ at the end. So S-I-G-N-I-F-I-Q.co. And you'll, you can see everything kind of that Signific offers, including my Building a Data Mindset course. Perfect. And we will be sure to post that to the podcast page when we publish it. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. It has been a pleasure to get to know you. Thank you so much. I actually really had fun talking with you as well. Thank you. I'm, I'm really excited that we talked about career paths. I'm, I can either add more of that in. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a big deal for me in my career because, you know, I just, I noticed it fairly early on that there just wasn't one. And I, yeah. I like to always grow. And so I, I realized very, really, very huh. early on that there wasn't any room to grow. And now there is. And so I'm a, I'm a big, I'm a big believer in helping my teams that I work with in terms of helping them find what their career paths are. Oh, that's exciting. Uh, well, again, Nicole, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. Thank you. And to all of our listeners out there, if you'd like to keep up to date in the latest in podcasts and in the latest in data management education, you can go to datadiversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time, stay curious, everyone. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks, a podcast brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe.